Stop whatever you're doing because this story demands your full attention. This is a story of resilience over resentment and triumph over adversity. Born without her left hand and forearm, Jessica Smith went through a horrific accident as a toddler, leading to third degree burns on 15% of her body. But what the society perceived to be her biggest weakness, she saw as her biggest strength. Defying all odds, she went on to represent her country and became part of the Australian Paralympics team in 2004, only because she refused to let that one incident define her story. Let's hear it from her. I was born in Australia and I've now been living in Dubai for about three years. I'm the mother of three young children. Um, I'm also a children's author and the chief operating officer at Touch Dubai, which is a, a talent management author, but also a disability inclusion consultancy. I think the, the mental anguish that comes with having a physical disability is really when the societal perceptions become a little bit overwhelming. Throughout my life, I've had to constantly prove people wrong by, by doing things with my body. So that's why, you know, in, I fell in love with sport um, and really wanting to show that in a physical level but mentally and emotionally it's been a lot harder to try and convince myself and the rest of the world that I'm, I'm a worthy human human being just like everybody else and I think that that has certainly been a different struggle at different stages in my life certainly as an adolescent and then also becoming a mom and wanting to be a good role model for my children and worried I guess about what that perception is by everybody else and sort of trying to build up that that inner armour and that positive voice inside to, to allow myself to, to be comfortable with who I am and irrespective of what other people might think. voice inside that I could do things rather than believing what other people said I might not be able to do so it's having to work with that every day and, and even now you know um, as a mother and sort of feeling as though I might be limited physically but knowing that I'll always find my own way of doing things that might just look different to the way that other people do things it sometimes comes at a price and that's that emotional and and I guess mental well-being of being able to say you know I am comfortable with who I am in a world that wasn't designed for, for somebody like me. trying to understand who I was and my place in the world. Sport gave me a sense of consistency and I guess a solid foundation for allowing me to figure out who I was. You know, that journey is, is essentially what created the person that I am today. You know, there's so many parallels that I can draw from, um, you know, being part of the Australian swimming team and being an elite athlete and what that has enabled me to do now. I've just uh, released a, a series of children's books uh, where myself is the, the main character and the reason I wanted to, to create a resource like this was so that children could see characters that represent what and who they see in their everyday lives. Um, you know I've been fortunate to work on a lot of things throughout my career but my focus now is sort of educating society about the benefits and the beauty in, in difference rather than seeing that as something that you know is so stigmatised. I wouldn't be sitting here with you today if mm -hmm. I had two arms, you know, and that is a really important part of the story is that I wouldn't have represented my country in swimming had I not been born with one arm. And I think it's seeing the opportunities where people see challenge and realising that it's just finding another way of doing something that society says can't be done. Just because we look a certain way or we do something a certain way doesn't mean it's the only way. And if we start to have those conversations at a more social level and, you know, around the, the dinner table, I think it allows people to be, be confident in, in asking questions and I think that that's where perhaps we've been a little bit fearful. You know, we're asking questions we might offend somebody or asking questions and fearful of the answer. But if we can, if we can do that from a place of good intentions and, and love and respect for one another, then I think that's going to help us to break down those, those last set of, of barriers that exist.